Welcome back to another five minute field trip. And we're looking at some Eocene, Quaternary, and even some Paleocene rocks down the way here in Texas. Now, most of the videos I've done so far have been up in Wyoming or Colorado. Um, haven't got to Utah yet, but that's coming up this year or later on. There's actually outcrops here in South Central Texas, and they are on the banks of, for example, the Colorado River, which is right behind me. We're outside of Bastrop State Park, which is just a little bit to the east. And behind me on this side is a beautiful road cut with some of the Eocene Carrizo formation. And the Carrizo is a combined uh, tidal mouth bar and fluvial system. It kind of finds up, it's got some bioturbation up towards the top. Uh, it's got some bedding, cross bedding down at the base. And a little bit down the road behind me is what's been interpreted as the Paleocene Eocene boundary in this kind of silty gray uh, bioturbated material. So the Carrizo is the upper Wilcox. That big scour surface, by the way, that goes all the way through and has lots of coarse grain material. You can see the bed forms. You can see the um, lamination, the coarse crude lamination, those um, really gravelly um, cross sets. That's interpreted as quaternary fluvial deposits. And those quaternary deposits are probably reworking what's called the Reclaw Formation, which is an even younger Eocene deposit here in Texas. So we're gonna take a look at some of this Eocene material in the Carrizo Formation. We're gonna look at some of the older Paleocene, and we're gonna maybe see some of the Reclaw and the quaternary on this trip. So hang on, there's gonna be more to come in just a second. So we're gonna come up here and take a look and see what we see behind these bushes because the Paleocene-Eocene boundary should be at this pretty dark, abrupt clay that's in there somewhere. Here's... Okay, here's a little bit of contextual overview for you guys. That lower part of the outcrop that my fingers are spanning right now, that's the Paleocene part, and that's the Sabine town, and that's some um, tidal, maybe tidal mouth bars, maybe some tidal flat deposits. On top of that right there, is this kind of gray interval of silty, bioturbated, uh, variably laminated, bioturbated siltstone with some sands and muds in it, like eh, right about there. And above that is the Carrizo, that golden sand that we started out on up the road. And that's the Eocene right there. So we've got a four million gap between the Carrizo and the grayish bioturbated siltstones. So with an ever-present whiteboard, we can kind of line it up with the outcrop and get an idea that the Carrizo is this cross-bedded material that's equivalent. It is the upper Wilcox um, group. The lower uh, Wilcox is not exposed here, but we do have the middle Wilcox, and the middle Wilcox is that Paleocene Sabine town with that kind of grayish silt, this is actually lining up pretty well, um, in between and representing possibly the PETM, the Paleocene-Eocene boundary. Um, we'll be talking more about that as it relates to the Wyoming outcrops that I've already talked a little bit about in other videos. But for now, it's just safe to point out that uh, there's an interesting change in the basin dynamics from the Paleocene to the Eocene reflected here and in Wyoming. Because in Wyoming, at about the same time we have the lack of sediment coming in, that four million year gap, is when the big lakes are forming. The Green River Lakes in Utah the lakes in the Hannah Basin in Wyoming. So there's lacustre information, sediment sequestration up there, and lack of sediment making it all the way down here to the Gulf Coast. Interesting. And here is the Paleocene. This is the Sabine Town formation, which is very characteristically uh, wavy, lenticular, and flasure bedded. There's a lot of silt, sand, mud, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, heterogeneity in there, rhythmic heterogeneity. It's very typical of what we see in tidal systems. So not surprisingly, this has been interpreted as tidal deposits, either tidal flats or the tops of tidal bars and deltas. And you can see right up there, right along the top, there's that zone of cleaner sand with that gray bioturbated silt. And in that gray bioturbated silt, there's also some carbonaceous material. Uh, there's been glossopharyngitis surfaces interpreted from a couple outcrops. So closer examination of this gray silty material shows that there's some really nice oxidized roots. You can see them in there coming down and branching. So these are root traces from when this was a paleosol. And if we actually look at the cross section of some, you can see that nice little carbonaceous material in there. Um, here's another one that kind of smeared out, unfortunately, but you can see those really nice little rootlets coming down in the Paleocene Eocene section. Then there's the unconformity right there. And then the tidal 
cross bedded sand, multicolored tidal cross bedded sand up on top. So maximum regress of surface down here, maximum regression of the coastline out during the Paleocene, a four million year gap. And then we're back into the wonderful world of tides and estuaries up here in the middle Eocene. Interesting. This is the boundary between the Eocene and Carrizo. This is about 51 million years old. And this is the 55 to 56 million year old Paleocene Eocene boundary siltstone, which is very gray, um, clay and silt dominated, very gritty kind of material, but still clay and silt rich. And this is a very, very fine grained sand in the Carrizo. And the Carrizo sand is interesting here because a couple of hundred meters to the north, um, sorry, to the south, it was dipping to the north. Here, the cross bed seemed to be going more to the south. And you can see this alternating reddish oxidized and cleaner sand in these cross beds. That's pretty typical in tidal systems. Um, so the Carrizo, not surprisingly, has been interpreted as maybe a tidal channel or a tidal delta or a tidal creek. Pretty cool. So that was our quick little visit to the Paleocene Eocene boundary section here in South Central Texas on the shores of the mighty Colorado River. I hope you found it interesting. I hope there was something useful in there for you. And if you're a geoscientist or you work in subsurface at all, or you're interested in reservoirs for whatever reason, step away from your keyboard, quit playing with your Python, get out, look at some rocks. They're not gonna hurt you too much unless you do something really stupid, but you'll be glad you did. Thanks for watching.